Jai Gurdav, Jai Masters. People can get just as lost, if not more so, on the, quote, spiritual path as they can doing anything else in life. Because the true essence of what is going on is very easy to get lost and to miss. Spirituality is not about anything you do or anything you don't do. It's not about your food, it's not about your clothes. It's not even about your beliefs. It's very simple. You exist inside. You don't have to do anything to exist inside. Obviously, you exist inside. If I walk up to you and say, hi, are you in there? Everybody seems to say yes. No one ever said no. Because you wouldn't know I said it to you if you weren't in there. You're a conscious being. You're aware. Believe it or not, that's it. That's how simple it is. In Zen, they talk about it's not about doing or not doing. It's about being. That's what that means. Well, I, then I guess I'm done because I be. Right? I exist. That is the essence of spirituality. What? I exist. So I don't understand. So why am I doing anything? Why is there a path? What's going on? And what you realize is you are consciousness, awareness. What is that? It's not to be discussed. It's like magic. Make the most amazing robot that ever existed. You may know it's there, but it doesn't know it's there. You may program it to say, yes, I know I'm there. But if you don't program it, it doesn't know it's there. You can have artificial intelligence and take what already knows and mix it all together and say, now I know I'm here and you didn't make me be here. I made me be here. It's just electronics acting a certain way. There's no awareness of being. Awareness of being is magic. The piano does not know it exists. You know it exists because you're aware. And I'm telling you, awareness is everything. It is the most important thing in all of creation. If everything existed, but nothing ever knew it existed, of what purpose is it? It has no value. Nothing. If nothing ever was aware that it was, then there's nothing. There's just absolutely, might as well not exist. (laughs) That's the essence of understanding that awareness is what gives everything value. If you are aware of anything, I don't care if it's a good thing or a bad thing, an ugly thing or a beautiful thing, a big thing or a little thing, it is not the thing that has value. It is the fact that you are aware of it. That gives it value. Mayor Baba had a little mathematical thing he did. He said, make believe that everything in creation is a zero. It has no value. In and of itself, it has no value. If nobody ever sees it, the most beautiful flower that was ever created is created out somewhere that nobody ever saw. Of what value is it? Nothing. It's a zero. Now take all these zeros, line them up in a line together, and there were zero. There's nothing. Now take the number one and put it at the left-hand side of those zeros. They become worth 100 billion, zillion, trillion. He said, that's what awareness is. That's what consciousness is. It is what gives value to everything. All right? Okay, now, so you are very special. You got it. Tag, you're it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to do anything. You're just there. Were you there yesterday? That's right. Were you in there yesterday? How do you know? Because you know that you know that you know. I am that I am that I am. All right? Were you in there 10 years ago? Yeah. When you were little, you know, five years old, did you ever look in a mirror? Anybody ever look in a mirror when they're five years old? Did it look like it looks now, your reflection? But were you there looking? It's so simple. You exist. You have existed from the beginning, uh, certainly within this birth that you know of, and you will be on your deathbed. When you're on your deathbed, will you know you're on your deathbed? Assuming that you're dying quietly, all right? But you, you can know that you know that you know, right? You may be able to know you took your last breath. You're there. That's the part that is spiritual. Nothing else is spiritual. Everything else is something you're aware of. The awareness itself is what is meant by the word spirit. Spirit is a mystical word. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You were in your consciousness. That's where you were. You were in your consciousness. All right, now, that's so simple that we shouldn't have to have a temple. We shouldn't have to have a church. We shouldn't have a synagogue because you're already there. <laughs> you're already there. You're, you are awareness. 
then what's the problem? The problem is not that you lost your awareness, right? Even if the teacher says, pay attention, you lost your awareness to what I'm saying. You may have lost your awareness to what she's saying, but you didn't lose your awareness. You were busy in there thinking about what you're going to do when you go home. And You're always aware. You are always aware. There was never one moment that you were not aware, and there will never be one moment you're not aware. What about when I go to sleep? When you go to sleep, you're not aware of what's in the room outside, but you're aware that you have dreams. Are you aware of your dreams? You wake up in the morning, I had this amazing dream. How do you know? How do you know? You were lying in your bed, dumb if I called you, you didn't even get up. How do you know you had the dream? But I, oh, I saw it. Who saw it? I did. So you were aware of the dream, correct? Is it the same you that was aware of the dream that is listening to me right now? It's not like you, you wouldn't know that you knew it if it wasn't the same you. There's just one of you. You may be schizophrenic and have, have split personalities, whatever they call it, right? Whichever one you're in, it's you. The awareness is still there. You're just aware of many different things. Back in the way early days, a young man came and stayed here, and he had serious psychological problems. He was on Thorazine, and you know he had voices. He had major problems. But if you talk to him, he would tell you, I hear these voices in my head. Who does? How do you know there's voices in your head? How do you know they're telling you bad things to do? You're in there. The same you. If you, if you come to me and say, oh my God, I think I hear these beautiful angels singing. Who hears them? How do you know? Or you come and say, these terrible voices are telling me terrible things to do. It's the same you. Consciousness is consciousness. The rest is called object of consciousness. What is it that consciousness is aware of? That's the object of consciousness. But consciousness looks out through your eyes. Consciousness hears through your ears. Consciousness knows when somebody touched you. Is the same you who looks out through your eyes as hears through your ears who feels? Is it the same you who notices your thoughts are driving you crazy or that they really got quiet? Is it the same you that when you go deep in meditation, come back and say, oh my God, that's the first time my thoughts stopped. How do you know? Because I exist. I exist independent of the object of consciousness. So if the object of consciousness is thoughts that are bothering you, you notice, you go to your doctor, and you say, my thoughts are bothering me, right? If you meet somebody and all of a sudden your heart pops open, how do you know it did that? What a silly question. No, not a silly question. That is the essence of all questions. How do you know that your heart is open around this person? Because you feel it. Who does? The same you who looks out through the eyes, the same you who hears through the ears, and the same you who looked at your reflection when you were five years old. You are you. There is no word for it. People try to give a word for it. That's the problem. Self, Atman, soul, pure essence, being. Just to think about a word for it is to leave it. Because the mind is thinking about it. If you have amnesia, you get clunked on the head and you get amnesia, full amnesia. Do you know what it's like inside an amnesiac's mind? Who am I? Who am I? I don't know who I am. You're the one who's noticing that you don't know who you are. You did not lose yourself. You lost the collection of patterns within your mind that held on to I'm this person and I live over here and I do that. You're still you if you don't have that. You are the consciousness. You're the part that never changes. The essence well, you are that, aren't you? Okay, then, and by the way, that is enlightenment. Master Yogananda didn't call it enlightenment. You know what he called it? Self-realization. That is so deep. Don't just say those words and not understand what they're saying. They're saying you realized who you are. Okay, so now we understand you're in there. And it's kind of neat to know you're already there. There's nothing you will do that will create consciousness. Never. And there's nothing you can do that will lose your consciousness. Well, what about in a dreamless state? Do you know that Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras actually talks about that? He says that even in the dreamless state where there are no thoughts, it is not that you are not conscious, you are conscious of nothing. You know, there's sensory deprivation tanks, and you get in the water and they close everything. Why would they do such a thing? Because it's so peaceful. Because when nothing is coming in through your senses, and Maybe your mind's not making noise. Good luck. All right. And you don't have emotion. You're just there. And it's the most peaceful state. Why would it not be the most peaceful state? Why? There's nothing disturbing the peace. 
the state of consciousness, that's why they use the example in so many scriptures of a crystal clear, just a totally mirror still lake. You've seen it. Reflection is perfect and there's not a single ripple in it. That's peace. That lake is at peace. It is in a state of complete equilibrium and peace. The slightest thing, if a mosquito lands on it, there's a vibration. And then it has to go out. Not to mention if a leaf or anything else happens. That's disturbing the peace. Every single thing, every object of consciousness that comes in puts a ripple into consciousness. Consciousness's natural state is peace, complete harmony. You in there have a nature. Everything has a nature. But you have a nature, and your nature is such an ananda. Eternal, conscious, ecstatic peace. That is what you are all the time. The problem is that you get distracted. What does? I called you. That's the right place to call you. You doesn't mean your body. You means your consciousness. You get distracted. Your thoughts distract you. Your emotions sure as heck distract you, don't they? What does that word mean? I once thought that the word distract, that is a deeply spiritual word, distract. Why? Because that's the fall from the garden. That is the essence, the fact that consciousness is aware. Aware of what? If it's aware of itself, it's enlightened. If it's aware of its own being, that's all. You're not thinking about it. You're just aware, I am that I am. That state is just pure, infinite consciousness. And the masters, such as Christ, that went into that state, said, my father and I are one. Then Buddha went to something called nirvana. And the great masters, the yogic masters said, Mayor Baba said, I was a drop of consciousness, a drop of water. It fell into the ocean. Find me. Never again. My father and I are one. Your consciousness merged with consciousness itself. That's what's in there. What's in there is God. You are something very, very great. The problem is you're not hanging out with you. You're hanging out with the object of consciousness that has distracted your awareness to pay attention to the object. That's what you're doing all the time. Whatever comes into your eyes distracts you. What comes into your ears distracted you. What's coming out of your heart distracts you. What's coming out of your mind distracts you. Every single thing distracts you. Well, if it distracts you, then you're not centered. That's what the word centered means. You're not sitting in the seat of self. You are sitting in the seat of the object. The example I always use, I hope you don't get tired of it because it's perfect, is you go into a house, I don't care if it's a mansion, I told you, you got invited to Spielberg's house or Gates's for a party. And all these people are there and it's the most beautiful place in the whole world and you're so excited and you walk in and you look into a little closet on the side where you're walking by and there's this little 15-inch flat screen TV. But it has something on it that has fascinated you since you were little. And all of a sudden... Netflix is having a special on it. And you walk in there and you take a look at it and it distracts you, doesn't it? It distracts you from what you were going to do, from where you were going. It distracts you from where you were distracted. How's that? (laughs) You were distracted by your thoughts. You were distracted by your excitement. You are distracted by the house. You are distracted by the famous people that are there and the music and the food. Oh, my God, right? And then this thing distracted you from that. Very few people get distracted from the seat of self because they're not there. They're already distracted. (laughs) They're already distracted by everything, right? Okay, so this distracts you. Now your awareness, you're always aware, is focused on that TV. There happens to be a little couch in there. You end up sitting down. You don't know how you got to the couch. You don't know what the couch looks like because you were in that TV from the moment you saw it. Your consciousness was absorbed by what was on the TV. You were not even in that little room. You don't even know what the little room looked like. And you're no longer in Spielberg's house. Not you aren't. You're in the TV. So consciousness can get so distracted that it's only aware of what it's aware of at that moment. You don't even know who you are. You don't know you have children. You don't know you have a husband. You don't know anything. Because you're not paying attention to your thoughts. You're paying attention to what's on the TV. Therefore, nothing exists except for you. Your awareness is completely fixated on the TV. All right. That is what is happening inside of you. You are a great being. You're a consciousness. And you're not limited. But because you focus on something that's limited, all of a sudden Spielberg's house is 15 inches by 15 inches. Because that's all you experience. Your house is, I would tell you, you know, two and a half feet by five or six feet. There it is. 
Your consciousness is absorbed in what's coming in through your body, what's coming in through your thoughts, what's coming in through your emotions. What percentage of the time do you think your consciousness is somewhere else? It's always thinking about you. It's absorbed by the movie of you. I don't like that. I want to do this. I want to have to do this. I don't think he said that. To, I, Ramakrishna Krishna said, I, me, and mine. Check it out how often that's what's going on. And your consciousness is absorbed in that. Okay, that's the problem. That's the fall from the garden. If it is true, and it is, you'll get there, you'll see as you get deeper back, that the essence of self is ecstasy. The essence of self is joy. The essence of self is universality. The essence of self is complete oneness with everything. You've heard that? Okay, that's what you are. Okay, there's the garden. Everything's fine. Everything's unbelievable. Everything's awesome. That's the state of your being. All right, that's God. In the Hindu scriptures, the yoga scriptures, they only say that you, the nature of you in their self, is Satchitananda. It's a name for God. Okay, as you get back there, you're going to find out you were a drop and it fell into the ocean. All right, you became one with everything. So basically, why don't I experience that? Because you're distracted. Because you're conscious and this has distracted you. It's as simple as that. If you're reading a book, you could have turned four pages and then you realize not a single thing got in there. You don't have any idea what you read. Why? You were distracted by your thoughts or you were distracted by a sound that somebody was talking over there. So you fell from the book. You were reading a book, that was the garden, and then you fell into your thoughts, your emotions, or somebody talking. That's the fall from the garden, I'm telling you. You'll know it when you get there. Why? Because you'll come back and there will just be pure ecstasy and total well-being of your being. And then something will distract you and you'll come back. And you realize, oh my God, now I have to work by the sweat of my own brow to be okay. You have to work by the sweat of your own brow. You didn't have to just work by the sweat of your own brow. You were the essence of well-being. You were the essence of ecstasy. But now, because you were distracted from yourself, it doesn't matter how beautiful you are. You're not looking at you. Yogananda said, there is a river of joy that flows inside of you. Find it, go there, get in, and drown. That's yoga, all right? But you don't know there's a river of joy inside. Let's watch it. Very, You don't know that, okay? Very few people know that. Someday you'll know it. If you work on yourself, you'll find out just, oh my God, I've been looking out there for it. It's in here. So what happens? What happens is your consciousness is distracted away from self, away from essence. It's distracted, and you then feel and experience the nature of what is distracted by. If you're sitting there watching a TV show and Stephen King made it, you're probably pretty freaked out or he didn't do a good job. That was his intention, (laughs) okay? If you're watching a TV show that's a comedy, you're probably laughing. If you're watching a TV show that's a drama, you're probably all engaged, right? The nature of what you put your consciousness on is what you feel. If a snake comes by in front of you, you feel fear and anxiety. If a butterfly comes, you feel love and, right? The nature of the object of consciousness, that's what it experiences. So because your consciousness is distracted by objects of consciousness, you don't get to know who you are. Why? Because you keep leaving yourself. You go to a a regular therapist, you say, I'm feeling so lonely and I feel left out and I don't don't feel, I really just feel so conscious all the time when I'm around people, right? They're going to talk to you about that. Why do you feel that, right? Whereas the yogi's going to say, wow, why are you distracted by that? You're the most beautiful thing in the whole world and you'll be distracted by these ugly little emotions. Just don't be distracted. Goodbye. <laughs> well, what difference? Clouds go by. They don't distract you so much. There are all kinds of shapes. Okay? There's all kinds of things going on in the world that don't distract you. Why do your emotions distract you? Why are you hanging out with the lowest part of your being? And the answer is because nobody ever taught me how not to because I am distracted by it for the very reason that it's the lowest part of my being. Okay? If a rattlesnake gets put in this room, 17 foot long, that's a big rattlesnake, big old rattlesnake put in the room, answer me quickly. Do you want it behind you or in front of you? Okay? In other words, if something's disturbing, you want to control it. You want to pay attention to it. You want to make sure you're on top of it, right? So if you have an emotion inside that's uncomfortable, just let it go. Especially, and this is straight, you, every one of you, 
have emotions inside about things that are not going on. They went on 10 years ago. They went on 20 years ago. They went on 50 years ago. Okay? And they're going on inside and you're trying to watch a movie. And what your sister did when you were six. Somehow the movie stimulated that and that's what's coming up inside. And you're now going to spend the next two hours sitting in that seat thinking about this thing that happened all these years ago instead of watching the good movie. Does that sound rational? It's not even happening. There's nothing you can do about it. So I'm asking you the question, now that you understand who you are, you are the consciousness, the awareness of being, where you put your awareness is what you're going to experience. So if you put your awareness on these emotions that are left over from when your parents got divorced when you were six, guess what you're going to be feeling? The feeling that it felt like when your parents got divorced when you were six. But in the meantime, there's flowers outside, there's people outside, there's friends outside, there's, there's movies outside, there's sunlight and things. You could put your consciousness there. You'd feel totally different, wouldn't you? Are you awake enough yet to realize what the heck you're doing in there? You are allowing, even if you don't know how beautiful the nature of self is, People who deeply meditate, they know that. People who have let go of themselves, they know that. Every one of them. I don't care what traditions they are. I don't care Christian, Jewish, this, that. It's just really beautiful. It's beautiful in there. Well, you don't know that. Why? Because you're not paying attention to you in there. You're paying attention to your emotions. You're paying attention to your thoughts. You're paying attention to what's coming in through your senses. All right? So it's very easy. I'll just send you home. You'll be five for the rest of your life. Just don't put your consciousness on places that it doesn't belong. No one's ever talked to you about that. It's mystical. That's what the Kabbalah is about in the ancient Jewish tradition, right? That's what the Sufis, that's the ancient uh, mystical aspect of, of Islam, all right? They all have that. But most people know nothing about that. So no one talks to you about, are you in there? Yes. Are you paying attention to things that are not going to make you so happy? Yes. And then you wonder why you're not happy. There, now you know why you're not happy. Because you're paying attention to things that are not happy. Do you know how not to? Not a chance in the world. All right, now that's very deep. Since you don't know how not to pay attention to it, in other words, it distracts you by itself and you have no control over it, you're addicted, what you do with your whole life, instead of learning how to let it go, this is your logic. You don't have to think about it. It's what happens naturally. I'm not comfortable with this. Well, of course you're not comfortable with this. You just put your consciousness on something that's not comfortable. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. All right? You're sitting there staring at a rattlesnake and wonder why you're scared. You, know, you can leave the room. No. Why? Because I'm scared. There you go. All right? You spend your life. So what you do is devote your life to trying to have objects in front of you that are pleasant. Instead of knowing how to come back to the seat of self to be okay, which you're ultimately totally okay, you try to not have rattlesnakes in front of you. You try to have butterflies in front of you. You try to have pretty colors in front of you. You try to create a world in front of you that is pleasant to you and make sure that there's not a world in front of you that is unpleasant to you. The question is, why don't you feel joy all the time? Because your consciousness is distracted by things that are not so joyful. That's why, since you don't know how to get back to the seat of consciousness, where it is nothing, but I'm telling you, nothing but joy all the time. Don't let somebody tell you that you have to know, you know sadness in order to know joy. When you go back far enough inside, which means letting go of what is distracting your consciousness, you will feel this joy and love welling up, waves, waves, just waving inside of you. That is the state of your being. You do not need anybody. Right? Yeah, I'm being terrible. Gibran, you know, the prophet Gibran is a real romanticist and so on. He says, love needs not but itself. Love gives not for, but to itself because love is sufficient unto love. That is a true statement. You think love's about another person? Love is about love. There's something inside of you called love. Why don't you feel it? Because you're distracted by something else. Why do you feel it? Because you're distracted by something you like. Oh, she's pretty. You want to feel love? Because she's pretty? In other words, because your consciousness is distracted by something that is pleasing to you, 
So now you put your consciousness on something nice instead of putting your consciousness on something not nice. Therefore, your consciousness feels more pleasant. And you open up because it's pleasant to you. Somebody else sees the same person and gets all turned off. There's reasons that certain objects of consciousness bring a sense of openness to you. Openness means I'm not distracted so much that I can't start to feel myself. That's why certain things turn you on. They don't turn you on. It's that you are open. You're open to it. When you're open to something, you're not closed. When you're not closed, you can pull back into the state of consciousness. You are naturally pulled back. So if somebody's hugging you that you're open to, you may find that you go bye-bye. What does that mean? I'm not being distracted by my thoughts. I'm not being distracted by the world. Have you ever felt, usually it happens in intimacy with you guys, right? But it can be meditation it can, or it can be a sunset. Have you ever felt that you're being pulled inside, that your eyes close and you just want to fall back? That's because there's beauty in there. And if you're open, what does open mean? I'm not distracted by it. I'm not so pulled out that I have to defend myself and protect myself or need it to grab it. I'm not busy doing something about it. Therefore, there's this sense of openness. Sunset's a really good example because you don't have a whole thing going about the sunset. But you turn the corner and there's this beautiful, beautiful sight. And next thing you know, whoa, you better pull over because you shouldn't be driving. It's hard to keep your eyes open. Why? Because you're being pulled inside because that's the nature of your being. Distraction pulls you outside, down and out. You'll feel it. It pulls you down and out. Openness allows you to be pulled in and up, period. So it's not that things turn you on. It's that you're open, and because you're open, it pulls you into a place that's beautiful inside of you. You actually tasted a bit of the sense of self. I felt such joy. I don't understand. At the sunset, you may sit there and say, it was like a spiritual experience, Mickey. I swear, I felt like I was standing in the face of God. You were. Not that the sunset is the face of God. God's everything. It's all the same, everything. The Rosh is exactly the same God as the sunset, right? The difference is you were open to the sunset, right? Therefore, you allowed this energy to well up inside of you. You are not open to the Rosh, right? And it closes completely and you feel fear and hatred and disgust. And, right? You're doing that, Right? By opening or closing. So basically, like, like the roach really captures your consciousness, doesn't it? You could have been very happy before you saw the roach. It changed everything. Isn't that amazing little thing, roach? Changed everything. Why? You were distracted away from the things that were making you happy. You see why I say distraction is a very spiritual word? It's the essence of everything. All right? So you're distracted by these things you like or distracted by the things you don't like. People say to me, but but isn't it nice to be distracted by things you like? Not as nice as to not be distracted. Because all that's happening when you're distracted by something you like is your opening. And because you're opening, you can start to get pulled back into a nicer space inside of you. Okay? But now you are attached to the thing you like. That's why you get jealous. That's why you get possessive. That's why all these things happen. Because that thing opens you, In order to feel the beautiful open feeling, you need that thing. So, no, it's not the same as naturally falling back into the seat of self unconditionally. That's what they were, unconditionally feeling the ecstasy of your being. And then enjoy, of course, go out and play and share the energy, do whatever you want. At that point, there isn't a want. There's just the expression of the beauty that's already going on inside of you. That's how a great being lives. It's not rules. It's not this or that. It's basically you have found joy and ecstasy and beauty and everything inside of your being. But there's a world out there. Help it. Serve it. You're going to express yourself, but you're expressing beauty as opposed to you are not okay. And there's only one reason you're not okay, because you've been pulled out of the seat of self. The self never loses its effulgence. Never. The self is beyond. It's transcendent. That's nice to know. You're not stuck, but you've got to get your consciousness off this stuff. So when the only way you can feel joy is for your consciousness to be distracted by something it likes, something that you're open to so that you can feel joy, you're in trouble. I guarantee you, until you find your way back to the unconditional seat of well-being of self, objects that open you will not always open you. Objects that open you are very conditional 
Now, just a minute. Why do they open you? Why is what opened her closes her? Why is what opened you yesterday closed you today? Because that's the science of psychology. You have experiences that you've had in your life in the past. Some of them were pleasant. That's not you. The butterfly's pleasant. The sunset's pleasant. And the snake is not such a pleasant experience, perhaps. You know, certainly coiled up rattlesnake is not a pleasant experience. So this is natural. This is not you. You didn't do that. That is the nature of things. Everything carries its nature. When that impression gets made on you, it should just go right through. Yes, I saw a snake. Yes, it was scary. What are we doing now? Be here now. You're, you're in the present moment. You're experiencing things. But that's not what happens. What happens if it's not pleasant or it is really pleasant, you hold on to it. It's called clinging. You think about that rattlesnake long after it's gone. In fact, you may never go outside again. Some people get really, really weird about stuff, don't they? You get in a car accident when you're little. You may never drive a car again. You've had impressions left on you that you didn't process. They were too much for you to process. Either too nice, you want them again, or too not nice. And no, I don't want it to have happened. You suppress it, like Freud talked, right? Those things then build a psyche inside of you. You made a collection of things you didn't like. Believe me, you made a collection of things you didn't like. I could say you made a collection of things you did like, but I'm telling you, it's about one to a million of the comparison between things you like versus the things you didn't like. So now you have a mind that is negatively oriented and you are distracted by that 100% of the time. That's what you're distracted by. Not the TV in Spielberg's house, that TV. And that thing is going all the time and it finds something wrong with everything, doesn't it? Oh my God, I gained a pound. All right, next thing I know, it'll be 20 pounds, right? What am I going to do with the thing? I don't know, I should go on a diet. I don't like diet. What is that? How are you supposed to enjoy your life if that's what you're paying attention to? How about you can't? Do you understand that? Everything you are looking for is yours, but you're looking away from yourself. You're looking away into this garbage. So the answer is very straightforward. You, truth, you need to learn to not be distracted by things, to be able to stay centered and focused in the seat of self And when things happen, they don't pull you out. That's called returning to the garden. And what will happen is it will happen naturally. You don't have to do it. It's not a Zen thing, okay? You just take a look and say, okay, I have this emotion inside of me. I've always had it. I'm self-conscious. I'm embarrassed to even exist, right? It just seems like everybody's looking at me. And you know what self-consciousness? Come on. You know, my hair is not exactly right. Oh my God, I, you go home at night. I've had this cowlick. Did I have it all day? Did I have it when I was talking to Mary? Oh my God. I went, what the heck are you doing? You're driving yourself crazy. So you decide, I don't want to do that. Do you hear me? How? Practice. You have to practice, just like you practice a piano. Seems kind of neat, right? Just like you practice the piano. I don't, but I don't know how to play the piano. That's why you practice. I don't know how to play tennis. I've never played. That's why we're here with a coach and with a racket. You know, you won't be very good to start with, but if you practice, you'll get better. There's no way you don't get better. You may not be a pro, but you're going to get better every time you practice. This is exactly the same. But you say, I don't know how to let go. I know you don't know how to let go. I'm scared to death of surrendering. I don't even believe in God. Why would I surrender? It's too scary. I need control. I understand. That's like saying when you're first, uh, my favorite thing is you go into calculus, Calc Calc 101. The teacher walks in, sits down, gets up, says, welcome to Calc 101. Okay, you raise your hand. No, I'm in the wrong room. Why? I don't know calculus. (laughs) That's what you try to say to me, right? No, this is not my path. I don't know how to let go. I don't even believe in God. Right? So how can I surrender? Yeah, it's like saying, I don't know. You learn. You practice. How do you practice non-distraction? Okay? Very simply. This is a foundation. All right? Take the simplest moments. The fact that it's hot. The fact that it's raining. The fact that the driver in front of you is driving slower than you want to. Things that you have no control over. And the only reason they're bothering you is because you said so. That's, the, that's my litmus test. The world is not bothering you. You are bothering yourself about the world. Those are those low-hanging fruits. The car in front of you is not bothering you. It can't. It's in front of you. 
You don't even know the driver. You're not talking to them even though you think you are. They don't hear a word you're saying. You are bothering yourself about how the driver is driving. True or not? All right. The rain is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the rain. The wind is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the wind. The heat is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the heat. There. The litmus test is, if I liked it, would it be bothering me? No. Well, then I guess the fact that I don't like it is what's bothering me. Whoa. That's down to Zen. I mean, that, do you hear me? How deep that is. So you understand that. Now practice. Practice what? Change. Change. What do you mean? Like the fact that the driver in front of you is driving the way they're driving. Oh my God, you get so mad at me. But I don't. No, your mind doesn't. It's just a habit that you formulated. Like the rain, like the heat. How? Use affirmation. That's what affirmation is about. I love it hot. Come on, get hotter. Just realize you can change your attitude about what's happening. Learn to not be bothered. Just like you learn to play the piano. So play, make it a game. I want you to make it a video game. You have the, bo- you have the most exciting video game you want inside of you. No thing will even come close. You're all busy with your little games. Play that game, right? It was once called the master game. Make something great of yourself. So if you see it complaining, just use affirmation. Say something nice about it. Or use reason. What is the purpose of making this noise? The driver's going to drive as they drive. Eventually they'll turn away. You can use logic. You can do anything you want. Just don't be it. And you're going to find out over time that you change. You can change. Ever change your mind? It usually does it by itself. How about you do it? All right? You just decide. Let me ask you a question. Do you like things better? Are you happier when you like something or when you don't like something? Uh, simple question. You go to sit down for lunch. Do you have a better lunch if you like it or if you don't like it? You meet a person. Go on a date. Meet a person. Do you enjoy yourself more if you like the person or if you don't like the person? So learn to like things. Learn to be open. Work with yourself. Change yourself. Period. Practice with these simple little things that happen every day that you have no control over, but you're still making yourself a mess over. I guarantee if you will do that, you're going to learn how to let go. You'll learn how to change. Next thing you know, something will come up from the past that used to bother you, and you'd handle it the same way. What's the purpose that's bothering me? I'm glad my parents got divorced. I'm glad I went through that. It was quite a growth experience. It made me a stronger person. I'm not blaming them. All of a sudden, you'll like your parents again. Work with it. That's your spiritual path. As you work with yourself every single second of every single moment to raise yourself, to make it more beautiful inside. If you do that, less things will bother you. Therefore, less things will distract you. If you are not distracted, the consciousness naturally pulls back to itself. When a commercial comes on the TV, you are back on the couch. What do you have to do? Nothing. If the things going on inside your head don't distract you, they're just been there, done that. There she is again. I can't take her anywhere. All right? That's the seat of witness consciousness. You hear me? You're letting go. Just keep letting go the best you can. If you fall down, just get up and let go again. All right? And over time... I'm telling you, you will feel joy inside of you, spontaneous, for no reason. That's the joy I like. No reason. It's just, whoa, that's nice in there. Good, hang out in there. And you will. So that's a discussion about who you are and about the power of distraction. You are distracted. Right, they talk about what, ADD or ADHD, right? Everybody is very distracted. Whereas yoga says, how about we don't get distracted? How about we work with consciousness itself because that's the joy of your life and that's when you'll come to know God. You can know God. Work on these things. Jai